Welcome to Tonight with Tim Modise. In the show tonight, we highlight the rising voices against gender-based violence and look at the developments and shows on at the Market Theatre. Good evening. The tragic story of the Rhodes University student, Kansani Maseko, is another blight on gender relations in South Africa. The young student committed suicide after she was allegedly raped by her boyfriend. Reports of this nature are commonplace at some universities. In the broader society, they are worse with horrific acts of violence committed against girls and women. Recently, different organizations called for a march called Total Shutdown, which presented a memorandum to President Cyril Ramaphosa. Women in South Africa and many other parts of the world suffer a range of injustices and worse still, also have to live in fear of their own partners. How do we turn this around? And my guests this evening are the hashtag Total Shutdown March organizers and activists, Loiso Saliso and Mahaile Konziwe. And a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you for having us. Good and, evening. And thank you very much. Now, the, I, I did ask before we got on air the difference between the Total Shutdown March and the 100 Men March because they happened, what, within a week or two weeks of each other. And uh, I may be missing the point. The end objectives were more or less the same. Am I right or wrong? Um, you are somewhat right because the objectives were to fight and uh, stand against um, gender-based violence. Yeah. Um, however, the one was by men um, standing up for gender-based violence and the other was by women for women. And with us, we were bringing solutions because we know how it feels firsthand. So I think that's where the difference was as well. Yeah. And of course, we'll get into the detail of the match and the memorandum and what we'd like to see the public generally do and the state in particular do to deal with gender-based violence. We have had marches. We're going to have activism coming up in November. Mm -hmm. We have the whole month now. We also have a women's holiday. But it appears the attitudes are not changing at all in South Africa. That's a disappointment, isn't it? And is there any, from, from observation, reading, interaction, that, that tells you why these attitudes are set in the manner that they are? Nothing is changing. I, I think um, we, we live in a very, very patriarchal society and we've been conditioned for hundreds of years. So it's going to take a lot to, 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 to move I in the right direction towards changing things in society. And there are organizations that are coming up, um, that are having voices, that are starting to do this work. and. But uh, we are not anywhere near changing how um, society treats and, and, and um, um, treats women, treats children and, and trans women, I, I, yeah. Also, well, just to yeah. add on to that, sorry. Yeah. Um, I also feel that the reason why it's still continuing, um, we can march all we want and, and we can hand over memorandums all we want. Um, we are trying to do things differently as a movement. However, I do feel that because we are marching against the government and against the justice system and the law, until there comes a day where the perpetrators are, are afraid of the consequences they're going to face, that's the day we're going to start seeing some kind mm. of difference. Mm. So I think it's up to the law, um, to the justice system and the government to actually start putting their foot down when it comes to perpetrators. Okay, which tells me then that uh, this was not the once of March that we saw. Mm. The, the <laughs> no, total shutdown not. is a movement now, and, and you know what? What ultimately is the end goal? Let's go back to how it started because it was a range of individuals, activists, and organizations that came together. How did you put it together before we go into what you're going to do, the next steps that are going to bring about effective change? Okay, so it all began on social media. Um, woke up one morning and wrote a long status about women being abused and how. Um, social media activism is really not doing any justice to the situation and it's about time that women start <coughs> taking the struggle in their own hands. Mm -hmm. um, we attempted starting it before, earlier on this year, but it didn't work out as planned. Um, when we started the group on Facebook and we saw the response of women, where we're currently, currently now sitting on 100,000 plus 100, women. 100,000? Yeah. From supporting and those who also have and it's a, it's a women's only closed group yes. as well, and, 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 and GNC folk. Sure. Um, so I, just want to, I just want to make sure I understand. It's 100,000 women who've indicated an interest. Absolutely. But these would have been victims of abuse as well. Absolutely. Not? Some of them. Some, some of them, them okay. yeah. Most of them. Most, Most of them are, yes. because uh, when we had the Our March um, um, 
hashtag, yeah. women were coming and saying, I will march because I was brutalized or beaten. Mm. I will mm. march because of my mm. sister, because mm. of my daughter. And, and um, it's really become a community of women where we're pulling each other up mm. and we've been known to pull each other down. Mm. It's amazing what's happening in that closed group. So from there onwards, the movement began. Mm. And now the memorandum was put together and you were very adamant that the president, Cyril Ramaphosa, must receive the memorandum mm. himself and not send a delegate to do so on his behalf. So it shows that you were very committed and it took place the whole day until in the evening. What is in that memorandum? What would you like to see happen? The first, um, our main demand in the memorandum is a summit. Um, the president has committed to having a summit with us on the on the 31st of August until the 1st of September. On that summit, we are going to because listen, there have been memorandums handed out and nothing has been done. Now we are questioning why, <coughs> why has nothing been done until now? So now our our main goal is not to start new demands, is to implement them. Mm. So we are get, get, gathering all the key stakeholders in that summit. President himself, all of them, they have to be in one place and will say, listen, justice system, you are failing us, A, B, C. Uh, 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 the social development you are failing us there and there and there. So the summit is where all we will we are planning it out as we are now, mapping our demands, and then we are going to hand them over and we are going to tell them where they are failing us and where they can uh, 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 do right. And just to add on to that, uh, the memorandum. First of all, it was not it, we did not come up with mm. the memorandum mm -hmm. ourselves as a, as a national steering committee. We actually drafted the, the framework and took it out to the people and said, let your voice be heard, you make your contributions, what do you want to see changing? And the memorandum is really us saying that we know the solutions, we are the ones who suffer, so mm -hmm. we'll give you the solutions. Can these departments play a role in implementing the things they need to implement? Um, like Mahaila has said, uh, one of them is the seminar, but within the first demand, which is the deadline is tomorrow, because each one has a deadline. Mm -hmm. um, we need um, a strong message from the president as well. Um, to tell people that we will not be tolerating gender-based violence in every level of society and also to never appoint somebody within the structures of government who has been implicated or accused of anything that has to do with violence or femicide. Um, that's one of the deadlines that we have for tomorrow that we want to hear him um, address today or at least latest by tomorrow in one of his events where he'll be addressing. So, <clears throat> I, I don't know, but I suspect there are people who are still in the employ of government who may have been charged with abuse of women or any of the horrific crimes mm. that can be committed against anybody, but particularly women. You expect him to have dismissed those people by then? Listen, if there is evidence of these people having done this, yeah. then action needs to be taken. Uh, well, I'm just asking, so we're clear. I mean, we, we're clear. Yeah, we're yeah. clear. Can, can, can they start cleaning up as well? Yeah. You know, um, I mean, how, what, how, what did it take for them to finally act on o, 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 o Minister Manana? Or, or former Minister Manana. Um, he's had three counts addressed and, and directed well, at well him. Well, re he's resigned from Parliament. Well, after how long? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I, I mean, it you has know? happened. Yeah. Um, he, he chose to resign. It took them long enough to address him and call him out. And I think that's, sort of, that's a problem that we have, is that there's a lot of lip service, you know, where we're saying we're fighting gender-based violence, but then when it comes to calling out those who are perpetrators, yeah. the government has <laughs> showed us they don't do that, because mm. they should have said on the onset that Mamela Apa Manana, it's the third time around. There's evidence that you tried to bribe the lady. We can't. And, 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 and set an example, you know? But it had to take months and them to, telling us about pr procedures and ini ini. So really, they need to take our lives and this situation seriously because there is a war on women's bodies and GNC folks and children. Now, typically, what are the challenges that women face when they try to get the state, whether the police station or any department that's supposed to assist women, um, what, are, what are the typical challenges that women face whenever they go to these government departments or agencies? They are victimized, mostly. Um, it, it's, it's so sad, really, that you go to a police station and report a, a rape and then you question about what were you wearing mm. or uh, what were you doing on the street or whatever the case may be. Police cannot handle uh, uh, cases of gender-based violence. They need to be trained. They need to be really trained. They, there needs to be programs 
where police are, 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 are especially trained to deal with these cases because they are victimizing victims and they are forever questioning them you know, instead of condemning uh, uh, gender-based violence. And the restraining orders are not working. We but you know, I, I actually am sympathetic. I think the state must come to the party, most Absolutely. definitely. And everybody agrees. And, mm. and it's easier to point to the police and what they need mm -hmm. to do. But do you believe that that's the cause of the rampant abuse of women that's going on in the country? Wh where can we start in terms of changing the attitudes mm -hmm. of violent men or abusive people towards women? Because, you know, we talk in yeah. the media mm -hmm. everywhere, you yeah. march, you do, but it's like, you know, <laughs> it, the message is not getting through mm -hmm. to, the spe to the people who should understand that abuse of women is wrong. Um, listen. Everybody has a role to play. We can't only rely on government or the police or the justice system. We, as people of the country on the ground, we have a role to play. I mean, in communities, there was a time whereby you knew that in Ekaase, for example, you would not go there and rob or, or, or abuse a woman because the community would come out and stand before that person. And I think we, we as a people, have actually allowed this to continue. We have allowed, we, we have sort of like become enablers because we do not intervene when we, when we witness these things. We do not call out um, the husband of the neighbor, you know, when we know what they are beating up somebody. For example, in, in the case that in March, the women were marching and they saw a man beating up a woman. Guess what they did? They went for the man, you know? And I think that's where we need to act. We need to make these people feel, Okuti, you don't belong in this society, you know? Mm. Um, for as long as we are tiptoeing around them mm. and we are constantly highlighting the victims and not the perpetrators, mm. we will continue having this problem because they are not named and shamed and therefore they continue to victimize. Now, what are the key things to look out for that you regard as positive outcomes following your march? W what do you think is going to happen going forward? We've heard about what do you expect from the president? What else would you like to see over the next three to six months? Um, listen, the summit, number one, is a great start because we will be involving everybody, NGO sector, government departments. We will be involving trade unions to come in as well because they, things have to change as well in the workplace. Um, we, are, we are working with um, NGO sectors across the country because we have task, te task teams in every province. And one of the things we've been receiving a lot are cases where women are saying, hey, um, I've got this case, are you able to help? Uh, that's where we, have a, we work with our relationship with NGOs to say, okay, can we refer this person here mm. to the relevant you know, NGO? And I think that's one of the big um, tasks that we have right now, that we, that we interact with one another, because we've been working in our different corners for a very long time, but now we are coming together to try and make sure. a network sure of sorts, an alliance. Of, 100%. Of, of, yeah, mm. no, that, and the step in the right direction. Yeah. Mm. Thank you very much for having been my guest. Thank, Thank you. you. That's Loiso, Saliso, and Mahaile Konsiwe, again, the organizers of the hashtag Total Shutdown movement, went on a march in Pretoria to the union buildings and handed a memorandum to President Cyril Ramaphosa. Expectations are very high mm -hmm. that you strike a blow against women abuse and we, we support your movement. In a short while, we'll be taking a look at the program of the Market Theatre. There's a special play that's on there. We'll be back in a moment.